Okay, so very quickly I wanted to show you how I've done this. Uh, I've got a couple of woodworking clamps with some cantilevered 2x4s and spacer blocks underneath. Uh, clamping this straight edge down and what I did is I took the rubber uh, mallet and once I had it in place fairly, fairly close, I then uh, just tapped a little bit to get the very edge of the straight edge up against the line. Now I noticed when doing that that the line itself wasn't completely straight. I suppose snapping a chalk line or something like that would be good, but I don't want to introduce chalk into the structure of the airplane. So <clears throat> this is about as good as it's going to get. I don't think there's a straighter way I could do this. Um, all the reference lines uh, from my um, perpendicular or all the uh, 209.5 millimeter marks from the perpendicular reference lines all line up properly so I think I've got it about as good as I can get it now I'm gonna stand I was gonna climb up onto the table and do this but because I'm right-handed um, I would have to cut starting at that end and then bring my way down here and uh, just the way that cutting with a um, scoring knife works is it's better to actually cut here and draw towards you uh, with the short side towards your body. So I think I can actually stand here and cut it. This is an Olfa P800 laminate cutter. Uh, you can see it's got a very sharp hook end on it and it's actually designed for cutting plastics. Uh, but the blade is perfectly good for scoring aluminum and if you make a good 8 to 10 passes with this on this thickness of material it'll actually cut quite deeply and very straight against the straight edge and then what I'll do is unclamp it slide it off the end of the table bend it and break it that'll give me a slightly rough edge along the break end but again that's why I went 209.5 millimeters so that I've got a half a millimeter tolerance to work with if I need to file it flat uh, or take out any irregularities for example the joint in this modular straight edge here you can see there's a slight irregularity there I'll have to clean that up a little bit after the cut uh, and there's one more right here and that'll give me more to work with now if I do this successfully and I get the cut exactly where I need to uh, I'll have to do it all over again on the next piece because if I have two wings to make so I'm actually going to set this up and let it record and we'll see how everything works of course while I'm cutting it it'll be running at three or four times normal speed for your uh, in your time frame but uh, I'm just gonna let it go and see how things go stand by now right now I'm actually adjusting the depth of the extension on the cutting knife so that I can clear these 2x4 blocks pretty easily. And I'm not going to cut real aggressively in the beginning because I want to make sure that I can get a nice, smooth, clean cut all the way down. And I'm actually holding counter pressure on the, on the straight edge here so that even if there's a little flex in the middle, Hopefully I can mitigate that here. There's a little piece of the straight edge there that's actually, there's a dent in it so it buckles outward. There's the joint. You want to go all the way off the end with your cut nice and smoothly just like that so now I have to do that eight or ten more times
long as you're holding the blade perfectly perpendicular to the material, you shouldn't end up with any erratic cuts. Everything should stay relatively against the straight edge, but I'm realizing that because this is a used straight edge, it's been done, this, this operation has been done with this straight edge before among many others. There are little nicks in the edges of it that I'm getting hung up on as I go down the length of it. So that's one of the reasons that you put the extra half a millimeter of material in there is so that when you do snap this off and there's any irregularities where those little nicks and divots are, you can file those out flat and have a perfect spar. Uh, one thing, uh, one other thing is that if you make a very good cut your first time around, that very first scoring line your first time around, the blade itself will have a tendency to stay in that channel that it cuts the first time. So, real, but um, after that very first cut, you generally don't have to worry as much about whether or not the blade is going to stay in the groove and make a nice consistent cut. Okay, I'm going to pause the video, take my clamps off, and see if I can break this off. Um, if I take the clamp off and look at it and it doesn't look like it's deep enough, I'm going to put it all back into position and make some more cuts. Stand by. Okay, the moment of truth. I've moved my table back because this, uh, I have a freezer here that the camera is sitting on and uh, I, if I had pulled the material out this way I, would, I would, didn't have enough room because of the freezer. So I've got the edge of the table on the very bottom edge of this bend. Uh, and we're going to see how this works. The cuts look deep enough. I scored it rather a lot. And you can see it's actually already starting to break off. Normally, normally this would actually fold right up against the table. But because I scored it enough, it's, it's tearing off like it's a pair of shears except for a few places, most likely. I don't want to get too aggressive with it because I don't want it to, I don't want it to buckle and kink where it shouldn't. Right. Well, that went a lot better than I expected it to. So what we have is a nice clean break of material. We take a few reference measurements along our uh, 90 degree lines here. I've got exactly 209 and a half. 209 and a half. 209.5. So literally it's it's exactly the way I cut it. Double check down here. 209.5. Two hundred nine point five, and the very end is closer to two hundred and nine. So that's okay. Um, what I'll do now is take the file. This is the factory edge here. I'll take the file and dress this up a little bit. I want to smooth that out. There's a bit of a rough texture from the factory rolling process when they extrude or when they flat roll this sheet uh, from the foundry. Um, I want to dress that edge up a little bit, remove any burrs on the edge here. This is going to take some more attention. This side that I cut is going to take a little bit more attention. You can see you can see here it's a pretty straight edge. There's a couple of spots where it's and uh, my lens is actually kind of a fisheye lens so it actually makes things look uh, bowed when they're really not but there's a couple of spots along the edge here where here's a good example this edge right here that was actually a joint in the uh, put the black wood behind it for contrast there's actually a a joint in the three section straight edge and that's what I was getting caught on is right here so I'll have to smooth that out, but that'll be easy. The burr on this edge, edge, excuse me, is not a problem. So I'm very happy with that. I was very nervous about doing this. It's a lot of material to waste if you make a mistake. So I'll go ahead and file that clean. 
I'll then file the cut edge on the remaining piece of stock and do the whole operation all over again with the same measurements just in reverse because of course I'm making a right handed side and a left handed side. So I'll do the exact operation in reverse and I'll have my spar web to start with. At that point I'll start laying out my station lines called for in the plans and uh, doing my, doing my um, lightning holes. Uh, for now, extremely happy with how this just cut. I've got this spar, the wing spar, and then there's, with this material, another long piece of spar for the horizontal stabilizer that's a little shorter. And I'm going to do that as well and get those out of the way and get those cut so I can move on to bigger and better things. Thanks for watching. I'll be back in a little bit.